Well, welcome again. I'm sorry about that. I got distracted. My cat kind of snuck up on me. Don't want to run her tail over. That would be very bad. There she goes. Back off to find a nice little place to nap. That evening again. It's a Monday evening. You know what that means. It's time for some Monday Night Raw with Hobo Tom. Again, my girlfriend, she's off at the cousin's wedding in Texas, whereas I should have to work. I wish I could be a professional photographer or something. Anything else than what I am? Well, that, I still don't mind being a hobo. And in fact, a quick little news note before we get into Raw. Because this is what it's like when worlds collide. Yes. Hobo Tom's going to the New Japan Pro Wrestling Show here in Daytona Beach. I'm going to see if I can meet about 6.58. I think I have the... It was, it was kind of neat. It was a, good, it was a semi-good experience. I have to learn to show up there on time at the box office and get a real box office. But I'm going to be the front row in the balcony. Right, right where the hobo should be. The peanut gallery. For Beach Ball Mania. No, I would never, ever, ever declare a New Japan event to be a beach ball mania. Zeus might come after me. That's no bueno. But again, you shall see me at the New Japan Pro Wrestling here at Daytona Beach on Friday, June 29th. I plan to be at about 6.50. Hopefully I see some people I know there. That'd be fun. But let's get to the point of today's thing. I am Hobo Tom. Girlfriend is not here again. We'll, we'll see more of her probably in July. She, she has that weird like month off. Where I don't get days off. Get back to work. You hobo. Let's talk about Monday Night Raw. I interesting show. I'll say that. Um, they were in San Diego, California. And the show starts off... Kind of weird. This whole show had a feeling like it was kind of slapped together. There seems to be some botches in there, so some not smooth moments. And probably one of them was kind of the opening. Again, you have Corbin just standing in the ring. You kind of say, oh, and Kurt Angle. And the constable and Corbin goes back and forth, leaving the ring, getting in the ring. I don't know. It was weird. It was cooking a little bit. It was din dinner time for, for a hobo. Nice little frozen dinner by Marie Callender. Some kind of semi stale bread, but it's been frozen. That was, that was good, though. Um, I, I, it was something about Brock, and he has some contractual obligation, and there's going to be no multi man match at Extreme Rules. So I guess this is going to set up Lashley and, and Reigns match. Uh, as soon as Kurt Angle starts talking about Brock Lesnar's news, Roman Reigns comes out. He had a, a mixed response. I think the crowd's slightly warming up to him. Although it still seems to be about 70, 30, more, more so boos and cheers. Every so often when Roman said something good, and it seemed to be a little bit more off the cuff for a change, give him a little bit more. Because when he's scripted, he just gets booed. Again. Roman Reigns has to learn to put that beef away. <laughs> His best line yet. A lot of people, including myself, think that was the most ingenious thing he's ever thought of. And me being a hobo? Hey, you never know. Then Bobby Lashley comes out. I mean, if you want Lashley to get cheered, hey, have him face up against Roman Reigns. Uh, <laughs> he told Roman Reigns to move, move, move on. He's, he's lost to Brock Lesnar multiple times. So he's got to move on, Roman. Paul Carter goes, yes, 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 yes. And they're they're kind of tired of him, too. Um, <laughs> again, Roman, it just felt like a shoot. It felt real. It felt genuine. Kind of um, going on Lashley, but not so much going to TNA, although I think that was a little bit implied. But his, his MMA. Uh, it really wasn't that stellar. <laughs> Kurt Angle cut off from him before he could say, yeah, you know what's going to come out. And again, that other side of Roman, and then when he, when he said that about Roman, the crowd just cheered. 
Then the revival come out, and I'm like, oh man, we're gonna have three more weeks of this nonsense. Okay, the new works, same story, kind of. Uh, very meta for some reason. But this led to our first match of the night, which was actually a really good match. I was shocked. And not so much just by the wrestling, but the storytelling and the interactions. So we had uh, Bobby Lashley versus, and, and Roman Reigns versus a revival. And when, when I saw this, I'm like, I just hope it's not a repeat of what it was because it's, it's going to. But then, hey, at least the revival get, get on TV. Again, with this, it really showed the inexperience, the non cohesiveness between Bobby Lashley. They're arguing about who's going to get in, doing blind tags to each other's dismay. Um, again, the Revival is such a good tag team. Starts off, they get a double backdrop, get both out of the ring. Lashley and Rain kind of stare down. Who's going to start off? Roman starts. I think Lashley's there kind of half in, half out. Then they got the good tag, good tag team wrestling. And this show, for some reason, was tag team heavy. I think there were only like two, two real singles matches. It was weird. But again, you have the classic double team moves by distractions. Again, very, they're very, I like the fact that they stayed with their initial thing of NX, and NXT of no flips, just fists. But they were, again, classic. Tag team distractions with cheap shots. Uh, the only other thing I've seen it used a couple times is the old Taz mission, and teams have used it, and it just seems to be used as a wrestle. And before in the ECW, it was feared. But I mean, that might be a minor minor quibble. I mean, then Lashley eventually gets in and cleans house. Roman then makes the blind tag. Last year, I think, he's he's a tag with Roman. And that distracted Roman enough. Revival get the win. For that fact, that was a surf and surf match. And and it it did tell a good story about how Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns aren't aren't really a tag team. And just realize there's three more weeks until Extreme Rules. I think there's only three more weeks until my punishment is up. Yay. Then you had the, the Woken kind of thing, and he said, it was a wonderful party, yes! Matt Hardy's so good, but this is where it kind of it felt sloppy. Um, it, it was, and again, the three weeks, I'm like, oh, they're going to have singles matches with tag teams. I think this was one of the like, three singles matches. It just seemed like tag team. it was a holla, 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 holla tag team action going on tonight. Again, uh, you had Woken Matt Hardy versus Curtis Axel. And I almost kind of knew it was going to set up. I'm like, they're not going to have this match yet. I'm like, oh, is gonna be, I'm going to have this for three more weeks. And I'm beginning to wonder if the B team, again, maybe, maybe because of the promos with, with the Woken Eaters of Worlds. If they're going to be like Curtis Axel and Damien Senda, where, where they did kind of parodies, I forget what it's called. I think Curtis Axel pretended to be Hulk Hogan and Damien Senda was the ultimate warrior. Was it, or at one time, and then he was Macho Man another time? It, it, it's okay. Again, this, this was really a soup. And it would have been higher, except for I think there was a botch, because they both got up. Matt, meaning Matt Hardy and Curtis Axel. And Matt Hardy appeared to be going for a superplex and just slipped and Axel just, Curtis Axel just fell on him. And, and even Matt seemed like, this wasn't supposed to happen. But the ref being true, because again, you do want to keep up the illusion that it is kind of some kind of a sport and it is kind of athletic. He did do the three count and ho hopefully Matt's okay. But then uh, they put that little seed of doubt because then they, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas are to celebrate. Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt were just staring at them. Matt Hardy goes, 
Please. Bravo, you got a win over me. That was excellent. Yes. So it's like, do they mean that to happen? Or, or is he really good at improvising? I'd like to think he's good at improvising. I want your opinion. Again, like, share, and comment. See if Matt Hardy was actually improvising. You can also send an email at hoboandgirlfriend.gmail or at gmail.com. And again, if you do send a comment or subscribe or even an email, you will get a response. I know nice brand new flash drive or a little camera drive. A lot of videos coming up Friday. So Saturday, maybe Sunday. New Japan Pro Wrestling video. Then review by Hobo Tom. Girlfriend won't be here. It'll always be Hobo Tom. Especially if it's in Daytona Beach and I can get to it. And it's cheap. Oh, by the way, never buy your tickets. Take a couple of minutes out of your day. Go to the venue. I think I managed to save about $40 price difference. Go to the venue. I had the same issue when I went to SmackDown. They wanted like 75 bucks for two tickets. I said, uh uh. I went to the stadium, got tickets for $52. And be mindful. Those are the hobo wins. And then we had a really quick match. Again, another can of Sue match. The Authors of Pain got on. So, so that's good. They were against the Gibson brothers. It was a can of soup. This was just a true squash match. Um, the Authors of Pain continued to beat down. I think teasing something now between them and Titus Worldwide. It's okay. Um, then you had Finn, Finn Balor backstage, and he's beginning to smile too much. It's like. He and Bobby Roode are going to the same smile school. <laughs> he did have the line of the night. Besides Roman Reigns. But, but he said Corbin needed to give his, his best back to the TGIF manager. That, that was funny. Again, just, again, then Kevin Owen comes in. So it's and then eventually, I think Braun Strowman comes in. So Kurt Angle makes of Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman versus Finn Bloor and Baron Corbin again. Holla, holla, holla! Gonna have a tag team match. This led to Alexa Bliss. I didn't realize how tiny she was, but I don't know. You could see her ribs and everything. Yeah, I have stories about that. I'll tell later. Girls and seeing ribs. Mm. I don't know what keep between ribs and actually seeing like the outline of a woman's pelvic bone. I don't know. Ugh. Man, I'm just kind of talks a little bit. Flex the bliss is out there with Mickey James. And it looks like a mother daughter combination. It's weird. Blah, blah, blah. She started to get, get wadded. And I think she kind of. Began to sucker the audience into wanting her. Then they just booed you, suck. <laughs> they were vicious. Natalia comes out, talks up Ronda Rousey. Natalia was wearing a lot of makeup. Again, if you've ever seen the superstars without makeup and, and what they look up all, all, all gussied up, you never know who they were. Sonya Deville's a Big one because I actually saw her at my gym. I've told the story a thousand times. Only reason I knew who she was because she had a big tattoo here, but her face looked entirely different naturally. Girlfriend isn't here, so I'm gonna actually look prettier without the makeup. Makeup just like looks too fake and plastic. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe yeah, I'm goofy. Who knows? Again, so you had a match. Again, only the second singles match of the night between Natalia versus Alexis. Oh, can a can of suit match. I mean, just kind of work. You have this nine jacks came down with, 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 with Natalia. So again, you have the two bouncing factors, James and nine jacks. 
Again, there were some botches. It was like a phantom stop or a phantom knee. It was like a good four or five second delayed reaction from Natalia. Yeah, maybe they didn't have enough time to practice. Um, Natalia did go over after Alexa Bliss was distracted by Nia Jax. I take him down, put to the sharpshooter by, by Natalia. Eh, you can't, can't assume, match. Wasn't anything great to talk about. And you have a Seth, a Seth, Seth interview. Again, it's just, the, the wrestling just seemed really sloppy. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they were, they were in that California love or something, but it was okay. At this point, it felt like a long hour and a half. Um, the Rise Squad come out with, during a Jinder Mahal photo shoot with Sunil Singh, or at least getting Sunil to the lines. Right squad, take the camera, take a couple pictures, and smash the camera. That's okay. I mean, if you're going to be nefarious, I mean, you want to make sure people don't see you doing bad stuff. But everyone's still going, oh, well, we know who to charge now. Um, so you have the right squad, take on Bank, Sasha Bank, Ember Moon, and Bailey. Again, this was all set up before. Trying to make Sasha Banks and, and, and Bailey get get together. And, and Bailey's he said heel turn again. You see the black wrist tape? That means you're a heel. You knew something was going to happen. I just, I don't know, maybe Extreme Rules would have been neat if something happened. Even more bunk. Who when Bailey said some bad words too. Bailey is a heel. Yeah, this is a classic tag team match. Um, this this was actually pretty fun though, and because it was, it gets a ham sandwich rating. Everyone likes it. Sandwiches are good. Yes. Then you kind of knew the right squad was going to go over. You knew something was going to happen. Ember Moon tried to be the peacekeeper between the two, just to get them focused. Sarah Logan still wants to just jump into the ring. And she's short, too, so she probably needs that extra little kind of umph to get in. Um, thinking about this, it was a good match inside. It was a good action outside. I mean, it's just like they've been doing this so often. But actually, instead of being that ham sandwich, this goes up to a surf and surf because we finally had our Bailey heel turn. Bailey began to punch the living stuffing out of Sasha Banks. And that was fun to watch. The crowd was behind it. Sasha took the, the roll-up pin from Ruby Riot and, and in a small package, small small package cradle situation. Bailey just got sick of losing all the time with Sasha. Bailey just began to pound the living purple out of her hair. It was good. Again, this is why I, I'm going to bump them. It's not going to be a ham sandwich. It's a surf and turf. Crowd just cheered Bailey. It's like, now I know Bailey's a heel. And you really know Bailey's a heel because Corey Graves talked her up. Um, KO again came out, talked about what, why are you teaming me with Braun Strowman? All he does is tosses, toss me off ladders, pushes me around. Then again, we had a we had kind of a singles match, I guess. So it was Noe Jose versus Mojo Rally. Mojo just came out and just ran down the whole conga line. So there's going to be no match. He, he singled out the guy in the cheeseburger suit. <laughs> like, Todd, do you think this is the pinnacle of your career? And the crowd just started to chant, Todd, 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 Todd. Todd. And eventually, there was no match. Mojo Raleigh walked back. No way Jose seemed upset. But the crowd said, We want Todd. We want Todd. And then this, this led to the tag team match. Uh, Braun Strowman versus, and, and Kevin Owens versus Finn Bloor and Barry Corbin. This match was really fun. This was a cheeseburger match. Ooh. Again, hard to screw up a good, yummy cheeseburger. Cheeseburgers are good for you folks. Again, this was a fun match. 
Um, and then kind of tease the whole fact that Kevin Owens still terrified of Braun Strowman. Uh, very reluctant to partner with him. Again, fun interactions. Uh, again, you have kind of a lack of cohesion with Finn and Corbin, although they kind of know they're on the same page. They don't act like it. Eventually, again, you did have the Finn and Baron implosion. And this was the first true count-off victory I've seen in a while. Which is good, because they have been teases of it. But no, this was the first one. And then this led to the main event, which was a filet mignon match. Because this match, they actually let breathe. I think it was a good half hour, at least. About 35 minutes. Only thing bad about it, it was a nothing finish, baby. No baby. Actually, Seth won, but by this qualification, I'll get into that a little bit. Um... Again, before the match, Seth, Seth, Seth gets called. Again, it was weird, weird wonky timing. Um, Seth is in the ring, and then all of a sudden, there's there, you see Kevin, who's just running from Braun Strowman. He realizes his car gets flipped over. I got your car. I got your keys. And Michael Cole's at the announce table. He just looked like he was like laughing through it. Again, but more so than the match, you have Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Child. Again, this was a flaming out match. It was a good pacing, especially for for championship match. I mean, they're treating this really like the world sh like the world title. Oh, and happy eighth birthday, Ryu! Saw that sign in the crowd. I think the only other thing there there were no weird signs in the crowd. And no cultaholic, no Simon Miller, no Stephen Larson signs. Okay. You never know. But again, as the match went on, you could see the pacing pick up. It was a tale of two stories. Also, where you had Seth trying to push the pace, again, as the challenger should, and the champion wanted to slow it down. He wanted to try and quito. Yeah, it was really good. Um, they would kick out of each other's kind of signature moves. The crowd really got into it, but it was a nothing finish. Drew McIntyre came in, pulled the referee out, couldn't make a free count. Nothing finish, baby, nobody wins. So. Dolph retains. Roman Reigns came down to cheers because he was going to save his buddy Seth Rollins. Maybe that's the way to get Roman over. Have him save people. Have him save his buddies. Again, Dolph ate a flying spear. That was pretty cool. I think Dean's still injured. And again, Drew McIntyre has to learn. He might have a thick Scottish skull, but no one has a thicker skull than a Samoan. Do not head but a Samoan. Never works. Uh, he, he he then eats a Superman punch, and Seth and Roman are in the ring standing tall. So overall, it was a weird it was a weird show. It had high points, had low points. It was it was, it was a really mixed bag. Again, just kind of looked very shoddy, very slipshot put together. Again, that's all I have to say about Raw. Again, if you agree or disagree with me, please feel free to leave a comment at. At the YouTube page, or send an email at hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com. Again, like, comment, subscribe. Good things will happen to you if you like, comment, and subscribe, or even send an email. And look for me, Hobo Tom, at the New Japan Wrestling Show this Friday, June 29th. Well, I think Gates.